Hudson from the Health Department, here to talk about African Americans and HIV AIDS, since we're disproportionate in the community. U.S. facts, African Americans are the group most affected by HIV AIDS. Although we only comprise 14% of the U.S. population, we account for 44% of all new HIV cases. As Dr. Smith said, young African-American gay and bisexual men are especially at risk for HIV. In 2009, black women accounted for 30% of the estimated new HIV infections. Most 85% of black women with HIV acquired through heterosexual sex. And then drug use goes down from there. <laughs> At some point in their life, an estimated 1 in 16 black men and 1 in 32 black women would be diagnosed with HIV infection. And according to the CDC, approximately 1 out of 50 black men are infected with HIV in the United States, and approximately 1 out of 160 black women are infected. That's too high. <coughs> okay. That's right. In Arkansas, African Americans comprise of 15% of the population, yet account for 42.17% of total HIV cases and 42.54% of the new HIV cases in Arkansas. A total of 3,354 black people are infected with HIV in Arkansas as, as of October 30, 2011. Prevention challenges for African Americans. The greater number of people living with HIV in African American communities and the fact that African Americans tend to have sex with partners of the same race means that they face a greater risk of HIV infection with each new sexual encounter. It's like we're sharing, you know, so that puts us at risk. Social, economic, a lot of people don't have health insurance so they don't go to the doctor or go to be tested until they're really, really sick and they usually go to uh, ER emergency rooms for that. Uh, lack of awareness of HIV status. Some people feel no news is good news. Mm -hmm. They don't want to know. Uh, many people do not believe they are at risk, especially black women. We feel like, oh, I don't mess with that type of guy. Um, me and my man been together 10 years, <laughs> so I don't have to worry about that. So, you know, that puts us at risk because we don't know what's going on out there, you know. It's a lot of man sharing, so we don't know for sure what's going on. Uh, the stigma, the fear, discrimination, homophobia, and negative perceptions about HIV testing. Uh, it's definitely a stigma if somebody's infected in our community or in our family, we don't want nobody to know. If they die, we tell the preacher, don't say nothing about AIDS at the funeral. Okay, it's too much of a stigma even today. Uh, discrimination, uh, people discriminate. Say if somebody's HIV positive and they come to your house to eat, don't give them a paper plate and a plastic fork and everybody else got a real plate. That happens. People are so afraid that it really did happen. As far as homophobia, the black community is definitely homophobic, especially with the black church. You know, if you're a black gay man, that seemed like the worst sin to be, you know, in the black community. And whereas um, the white community seems to be more accepting of uh, homosexuality, mm -hmm. gay white males tend to just sleep with gay white males. They're under no pressure to sleep with women, whereas black men are under pressure <laughs> to sleep with women even if they don't want to. So that increases our risk as black women. Uh, and of course, down low, men on the down low, men who have sex with other men who don't consider themselves gay or homosexual, that increases our numbers because they can't be up front and say, you know, I go both ways. What do we tell him? To the left. So they're not going to tell us. Uh, the men in prison, even though they test them going into prison and they test them coming out of prison, uh, their numbers are a little higher in prison, mm -hmm. so therefore they come home and uh, give it to their wives and girlfriends or boyfriends, so that's another way we're being infected. Sex for drugs, drugs for sex, so all of these things increases black women's risk of being infected with HIV. It's not just one thing, it's a host of things. Uh, the shame and the guilt, like I said, um, 
health fairs like this health fair today, a lot of people will not go to the table to take pamphlets on HIV or other STDs. We're too embarrassed. We don't want people to know we even want to think about that, especially the condoms on the table. We have condoms. I have to make people come to my table. They look at me and go <laughs> to it, you know, I say, come on over here. This is the most important table, you know. So it's the stigma of even just having the information, you know, people just afraid what other people will say. HIV AIDS prevention, make HIV testing a routine part of getting medical care. I wish doctors would suggest when we go for mm -hmm. our GYN appointments or whatever, would you like to be tested for HIV? Many people would say yes, but they're not going to just say, will you test me? They don't want their doctors to think they like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And doctors don't want to suggest because they don't want you mad at them for suggesting that they're, you know, some, you want to be tested for HIV? I don't think so. What, why you think, why are you asking me? You know, we'll get an attitude with them. So therefore, uh, we're going to have to just tell, when we go get our pap smears, just tell them to test us for everything. Diagnose HIV infections outside the medical settings, community centers, churches, health fairs. We really need to get the black churches involved because that's where most people are on Sundays, especially black women. So if we could get the black churches involved with testing, health fairs, workshops, I think that will help us tremendously. We used to have a, a group here that dealt with the churches, RAIN, Regional AIDS Interfaith Network, with Sybil Ward over there as the director, we used to go into different churches and have care partners, so it seemed like that needs to be reinstituted on some level so that more churches would be involved. Uh, we need to limit the number of sex partners. The more sex partners you have, the more likely you will be infected with something. Use condoms consistently and correctly. Uh, Many people just don't want to use condoms. They say, oh, I can't feel nothing. I guess that's what guys say, oh, I can't feel nothing. So uh, the females need to say, well, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only way I'm going to do it is you use this condom. But we want to be loved. We want to be, you know, we don't want to do anything that makes them not want to be with us. We don't want them to go and have sex with Shamika. So we'll put our lives on the line and have sex with people without protection. So we need to assume that everybody possibly got something until you know for sure. So if it's going to be me and you, baby, just go to the health department so we'll be tested together. And then can you trust them with your life? Maybe, maybe not, so maybe you still need to use condoms even after you get tested to be for sure. Use condoms consistently and correctly. They also have female condoms out, but because women don't want to use them, Walmart don't sell them anymore. They used to, Walgreens used to sell them, but uh, my doctor GYN told me that women don't want to put anything up in them. So they were not buying them, so they're not selling them. You probably have to get them online or maybe Cupid's or somewhere like that. <laughs> Otherwise, they're very hard to find. Um, and uh, But somebody asked, why did the elderly, why it seems to be going up? We have Viagra out here now, Cialis. So these older guys are having more sex than they usually do. And they're having sex with younger women. And then if you're in the church and you start dating Brother John, you think he okay. But he might not be okay because he got Viagra. So we need to be a, we need to assume, you know, just because we can't have babies anymore and just because, you know, we're at that age that we don't have to worry about that, we still need to worry that we could be infected with something. And uh, women over 50, a lot of people think women over 50 don't even have sex. So doctors don't want to ask us if we want to be tested because they don't want to embarrass us or whatever. So I think that we, we need to be more assertive with ourselves and love ourselves more and take care of ourselves. And uh, maybe that will help us, help our numbers to go down some. Uh, before you have sex with somebody, you need to talk to them, ask them about their past sex history, ask them do they shoot needles in their arm because if they do, you're at a higher risk for hepatitis. Also, and uh, ask them how they bisexual. You need to interview people. Don't just have sex with them. You know, interview them, talk to them. Do you go both ways? Do you sleep with men and women? You know, 
don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, I have a little sheet. We have an STD fact pamphlet. I tell the teenagers, pull out that little sheet and ask them, do you have any of these symptoms? You know. <laughs> you got to be up front. You do. And before you have sex with somebody, turn on the light. Look at their penis. Look at their vagina. I'm trying to keep it real because this disease is killing people. Look at their penis. Look at their vagina to make sure you don't see any bumps or sores or bruises or cuts or anything. If you can't look, then you don't need to be doing anything. You know, so look before you leap to make sure that, you know, it's not anything down there that you can get. If you see something, no means no at any time. Even if you buck naked in the room, you can change your mind and say, I changed my mind. I don't think I want to go through with this. If you see something, you know, don't just go in there blind. So look before you leap. And I think I'm wrapping it up here. <laughs> Part of <ten. laughs> I believe with these African proverbs, the ruin of a nation begins in the homes of its people. So we need to talk to each other and uh, let HIV just be like a regular subject and not be, ooh, we talking about sex? Yeah, we talking about sex. It's a normal thing. And when spiders unite, they can tie up a lion. So if we all come together, maybe we can make an impact. Maybe we need a march on Washington for <laughs> HIV AIDS, you know, because nothing's really going on now. People think, oh, it's over. We don't hear about it hardly anymore. So we, we really need the churches to get involved because that's where the majority of black women are. We're the majority of the people in the church. So I think if we all band together, we can get something done and bring about a, a uh, if not a cure, at least a decrease in numbers of being, people being infected. Thank you. What's the questions that you all have? But we're gonna make a, we're gonna take a break shortly after the question and answer period. You can come listen. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to give Giselle a token of our appreciation for that good, comprehensive information. <laughs> 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 Always great.